Hello lovely viewers and welcome to another devlog with me Jason. Um, so I have made, you, you probably guessed from the title of this video and the description, that I have made a quest log. Actually I've done loads since the last video. I've, uh, I've been really busy. I'm working on the game every day, even on days when I'm in my day job. After work I, don't, I um, spend at least sort of half an hour, an hour with it. Uh, I find that if I have a day or two where I don't work on the game, I start to forget how things work. So I have to um, sort of do a little bit every single day. Um, but I enjoy it, so it's okay. Anyway, the quest log. Here we go. A quest log, but with no quests in it. Um, so we've got some animation happening here. Um, we've got the, the sort of curtain coming down that I use for the dialogue system, but I have it come all the way down so that the, the artwork for the main game goes darker so that it makes it gives a bit more contrast, makes it easier to see, makes it less busy. So uh, when you close the quest log, the pen and lid fall off the screen and the curtain slides up. The uh, inventory animates on and off as well because you can't use that with this open. This text to do is uh, just graphical text. It's part of this uh, PNG. And I just did some freehand doodles in Illustrator like Trevor's been doodling with his biro there. So let's go ahead and collect a quest. Now, we we haven't got any NPCs in the game to give us quests yet. So I've just got these coins. So if we go ahead and collect quest one, you will see quest one, which is also called quest 10. And I'll explain why in a minute. It gets given an order number at the beginning. And it's order zero because uh, it's the first quest we've got. And we're starting at zero. So let's go ahead and collect the other two quests. I'll collect quest zero and quest two. And there you go. So one, zero, two is the um, order they're appearing in. Well, these are the quest numbers. This is the order they're appearing in. So each quest in the game does have a number, but what's really relevant is the order number they get given when you collect them. There's a variable that uh, jumps by 10, and that number is assigned when you get a new quest to another variable that, that is used to track the order of the quest. So uh, if we close the quest log, while we're out here, I'm just going to show you something I did to my inventory. I've added uh, an inspect item functionality. So if we collect the dinosaur, the mug and the plant and open the inventory, you'll see that there's something new going on here. We are able to select items. Now each item here has a second animation with a white border instead of a grey border. And we've got a pointer here and I just do a distance between, I think um, I do, I can't remember now. It's, I, it was either a collision check or a distance between. Two. So when this pointer is, is, is very close to these items and you press a button, you get a description of the item or a little bit of silly text or whatever about the item. Um, and we move, we move and we get that. And then we get this one finally. And this is, this is a, I wasn't actually planning to show this in this video. So that's why the text is really rubbish. But this is, this is from the film Labyrinth, except in the film Labyrinth, he's talking about a crystal, not about a plant. And I just wanted to test that when it wrapped to three lines, there was enough room because I don't think I'll ever add more than three lines for an item. So that is, um, uh, item inspection functionality and um, I realized once I'd put that in place that I could use that for some puzzle solving in the game so let's say Trevor he's standing by a manhole cover and he's got the crowbar in here and you press a button and he says oh great I can open the manhole cover with this but if you chose the dinosaur he would say I can't open a manhole cover with a dinosaur don't be ridiculous um, so simple point and click style adventure um, puzzles you know use an item with a thing um, but I'm not sure I'm not sure if I'll do that in my game have simple puzzles or not I'm not sure if I'll go in that direction but it's nice to have the functionality even if I don't use it until my next game um, which is really jumping ahead to the year 2057 right let's close that anyway this is a video about a quest log so let's get on with it there is the quest log still and everything's still in the order it should be I did have a bit of a bug, you see, where the inventory and the quest log were upsetting each other. And um, 
the quests all disappeared because of the in, anyway anyway I, I solved it yesterday I, th I was actually halfway through doing it doing this video when I realized there was a bug so I had to go and fix the bug and then start recording all over again <laughs> um, but it's really handy however you discover these bugs it's it's good I need to know um, so we go indoors and we won't collect quest 4 first because if we did quest 4 would appear on line 4 and you might not believe me that this works dynamically so what we're going to do we're going to go and collect quest 3 from Trevor's bedroom first there we go and you'll see quest 3 appears not on line 3 it appears on line 4 because it's the fourth quest that we've collected so and we close there's nothing new in Trevor's bedroom to show you so we'll go back downstairs and lastly we'll collect quest 4 which appears on line 5 and is given the number 40 for its order so um, there you go the quest and I will just change scenes so that you can see it doesn't break <laughs> because it did, it did at one point um, so there we go the order is maintained the items all display fine um, off we go now my quest log also supports sub quests so if we go into the kitchen there are three sub quests come on Trevor honestly he doesn't like to shift does he right um, and we'll collect those in a, in a arbitrary order as well I love that word I love I don't get to use it very often arbitrary right quest two one and when he gets there come on Trev um, then when we open the quest log as you would expect they these sub quests belong to quest zero so they appear underneath quest zero and they instead of being given order numbers jumping in increments of 10 they jump in increments of just one and so you might now see why I have named things and used order numbers um, actually I mean these don't need to be 20 30 40 but the order numbers certainly do because then that gives me the option of having sub quests that can slot in um, if these main quests were one two three four five um, where would my sub quests go they would not be ordered properly um, so um, what happens when you collect a sub quest I use an expression to work out this order number so let's say that we don't have any sub quests yet but we have got quest zero so when I collect a sub quest the expression takes the order number for the main quest it looks at the quest stage of each of the sub quests for that quest crikey and when you collect one the quest stage is zero now I've got uh, a quest stage variable and stage zero means you haven't got the quest yet stage one means you've got the quest and it will be displaying here and st and stage two means you've completed the quest and ultimately if something is stage two it will be deleted from here and appear on a separate page of completed quests but I haven't designed that yet I've got to figure all that out as well because I think I don't want completed quests to stay here because it will get too crowded and I don't want them to be just, just deleted and forgotten I want people to be able to look at quests they've completed already so I'm going to build that in maybe in time for the next devlog so um, it would be 10 uh, plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 and so you get 11 and when you collect your second sub quest it will be 10 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 1 12 and then lastly 10 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 1 you get 13 so um, hopefully that makes sense yeah it's, it's an expression and I it was weird I was having a coffee in town and it just popped into my head because I was I was figuring I was thinking how do I do the logic for the sub quests you know I figured it out for the main ones but how what, how on earth do I do it and it occurred to me to use the stage number uh, instead of the order numbers uh, I was preoccupied with the order number as a way of solving the problem but I can use the quest stage because when you collect your first sub quest the quest stage for all of the sub quests is zero so you just anyway yeah so that's an expression for that so that is my quest log we've got this we, it supports quests it supports sub quests it's it's on note paper 
I mean, what more could you want? In in my game, the way I've got the, the beginning of the game, Trevor's dad is going to be sitting here having breakfast. Trevor comes downstairs and that note paper, this quest log, is pinned with a fridge magnet to the fridge and it's his shopping list. He needs to go to the supermarket and buy certain things. So this will actually have items that he needs to get from the supermarket. And that's how the game starts. He's he's going to I think he's going to be making a cake for a friend or something. Um and his dad tells him to retrieve the uh the shopping list from the fridge and that's when you get your quest log. And uh, and it's not going to be very straightforward for Trevor. He's going to go to the supermarket to buy certain things and they're going to be out of stock. Um or maybe somebody said that it was going to snow soon, so everyone bought everything. I don't know if any of you live in the UK, but oh my God, over here, whenever the newspapers say there's a bit of bad weather coming, people lose their minds and they buy everything in the supermarket. They just they just completely strip the shelves. It's absolutely insane. I mean, you can imagine what happened when they said COVID was happening. I mean, my goodness me, there wasn't a baked bean left on the shelf. So anyway, when Trevor goes to the supermarket, everyone's lost their minds and bought everything. So he has to f come up with more inventive ways of getting the ingredients for his cake. And that's the basis for my silly little game. A few further points that I've I'd forgotten to mention. Uh, I'm not using yarn for the quest log text. I set the texts in events instead. Because they're only sentences, just simple sentences, I decided rather than kind of, uh, you know, referencing nodes and maybe get, you know, having a separate node for each quest stage and all this sort of, all using variables or whatever in yarn, I decided that actually it was easier just to put the quest text inside an event. Um, so yes, I'm not using yarn, if anyone was wondering. And also, uh, the reason I've not shown my events is because I think they're a bit long-winded and repetitive, and I don't want to give anyone any bad habits, really. This is something that I want to work on this year, is improving my events, streamlining my events. So, for example, uh, at the beginning of the scene, the game checks what quests you've got. Um, you know, fair enough, right? But I've done it in a way that is a bit long-winded I think there's a separate sub event for each quest in the game checking whether you've got that quest and if you've got that quest it creates the quest inside the quest log and there's got to be I'm sure there's a more dynamic way of doing it um, where the game can cycle through all the available quests and and populate a list based on that sort of loop um, and my inventory works in a similar way I kind of I check what items you've got at the beginning of the scene but in in individual events for one for each item in the inventory so I just have a bit of a mental block around that kind of streamlining I've I've looked at the wiki I've, I've experimented with things like repeat for each child and all this sort of stuff but I yeah I, I just seem to find it very hard I, I seem to get stuck on that so so all of my events in my game um, I, I have a, an event per item kind of thing so it's a bit long-winded and that's definitely something I want to improve this year so yeah I didn't I didn't really feel like showing you those you'd all be telling me how we, I don't need 20 separate events I could do it with one and then but then again I suppose that might be useful if someone was able to help me understand but uh, I've tried and I I'm me and uh, these kind of loops that cycle through things are uh, yeah got a bit of a mental block with that but I will continue to learn I will continue to try and improve um, so that's it for this devlog um, about my quest log devlog about my quest log um, I'm not sure what the next one will be about I've got obviously I've got a big anyone who's making a game has got a great big to-do list so who knows I'd like to implement the done uh, completed quests uh, page so that you've got a separate page with completed quests um, so I'll probably design that next and then once the quest log is finished I might start designing some NPCs and, and uh, illustrating some new scenes uh, maybe even writing some dialogue text getting sort of in back into the art stuff I suppose rather than the nuts and bolts event stuff but anyway that's it for me from me for now. Thanks very much for watching and good day to you.